guys! We're back and Seduce Me 2 to do Sam's second bad ending. And there's a lot of choices that we have to change. We're gonna get this bad ending, apparently. So, it starts right at the very first one. Instead of a small wedding, which I liked, we're gonna go for a big wedding. Be contrary. Despite Sam wanting a small wedding, I really wanted to make our wedding a big deal. It was important to me, and I wanted to celebrate us being married on a grand scale. I mentally apologized to Sam as I voiced my thoughts out loud. Damien looks so sad. This is a big deal, so we should make it a big event. Eric and James nodded as Matthew looked over the numbers for food prices. Damien, however, looked at Sam as Sam kept his head down, not wanting to fight my choice. It was out of character, but I knew that he wanted me to be happy. Okay, so there's that one. Then we have to wait for Naomi and Suzu to call. There we go. I gotta pick the other option this time. We did not and have not had sex. Lying through my nose. It was true. We hadn't had sex, even when he confessed his feelings for me. It wasn't a matter of lack of passion or lack of desire, but I just wasn't up for having sex. I was not up for it. You're telling me you've been living with this guy for two years and you've never... Lying. So much lying. There are more ways to show your love than just the mattress mambo. Tell that to the other roots we've done, Angel. She was just teasing. It's alright. No need to be embarrassed. But it's true! Wait. So you still have your cherry? Jeez! I'm with you, Susie. And what about you, Miss Nosy? I popped my cherry before we graduated. Damn. Then you're the only one in the trio who's not a virgin. Well, I made Naomi happy. You too, Naomi. Oh, come on. I couldn't help but laugh a bit. We were very comfortable with each other. First, it was crayons in kindergarten. Then TV shows in grade school. Then boys in high school. And now, the sex. We were the very tight-knit triple threat trio. But hey, we gotta let you go, okay? We haven't eaten and it's almost 9 p.m. I have to go too, to the next choice, Naomi. Gotta be nosy and overhear things. And this time I'm not gonna talk about it. I shook my head. This was a private matter. I did, and I will discuss this with Sam on my own. The other boys nodded, understanding my stand on the subject. I needed to figure this out with Sam, not with them. Okay. And then we're not going to talk to Sam about it, I think, is the next thing. Yeah, no. I shook my head. No, I would let Sam approach me about it on his own time. I didn't want to press the issue if it was something Sam needed to sort out. I watched Sam as he looked through the list of guests we were expecting to have. I smiled at the sight. He had learned how to read in only two years, and now he was almost as proficient at reading as his eldest brother. I didn't want to break his concentration, so I continued to run through the party list of flowers and arrangements. Okay, and this time we're not going to have a ten minute sweat fest I shook my head. I didn't need to seduce him tonight. I thought you guys, like, I thought you just didn't, like, feel like it. You didn't feel like having ma mattress mom- ma ma bleh, bleh, bleh. <sighs> Mattress mambas. Ever. Anyway, we had all the time in the world to make love, and even if we never did, we still could find ways to show our love for each other. I would always be able to show him my love and be able to prove it every day of my life for as long as he'd have me. Sam looked up and let out a tired yawn. Okay. <clears throat> That's enough work. Wanna hit the hay? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. We cleaned up our paperwork as well as the dinner we had eaten as we worked and headed back upstairs. We were so wiped out by the time we hit the pillows that we didn't even care if we were still wearing our casual clothes. Sleep was just begging for us to escape until it's dark embrace. Okay, and that's that until I eat stew and things, so I will bring you in when we have some new options to pick. Okay, so Sam has just gone AWOL on Diana and then Sarah stepped in, and this time I'm not going to stop Sam. Don't get involved. I didn't want to get involved, 
Sam and the guard seemed very determined to beat each other. Who knew what would happen if someone stepped in? I held my breath, watching as Sam continued to duck and dodge the barrage of spear thrusts the guard threw at him. Get out of my way! Sam finally lunged forward, do dodging the guard's spear before slamming his fist into the guard's chest and knocking him back. Ah! Pesky mongrel! The guard retaliated by swinging his spear around and swiping at Sam, making him jump back. Enough! Finally. Before the guard could follow through with another attack, a large snap echoed through the air, forcing everyone in the room, including me and Sam, to look over and see Diana glaring at her guard. Diana slowly stood up straight and pointed at the space beside her, ushering the guard to quickly run to it and turn back to face the rest of us. It's like, come here, dog. I used the opportunity to step in between Sam and Diana. Sam looked to me with eyes full of bloodlust, begging me silently to continue the fight. I glared back, trying to break through his rage to get him to calm down. He relented and gritted his teeth before nodding and looking to Diana and her guard. I'll forgive you for now, brute. Okay, so now we gotta do the next choice. Okay, so instead of kissing him, we say, It's okay. Everything was okay now. Sam nodded in understanding and then replied to my words. Okay. Well, you guys can stay here, because it's just... I gotta do the we can fight too speech. Do 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 Okay, I say the trap, because whatever, doesn't really matter. I like the trap more than the curse though. And we can fight too. And then when he asks if I'm okay, I say yes and lie. I wasn't alright. All of this was a muddled mess, and I couldn't help but worry. It had to have been obvious anyway for Sam to notice and ask. Still, I didn't want him to know, especially if these worries were going to fade away eventually. I smiled at him and hugged his arm to me, making Sam gasp before smiling a bit and pulling me to him. All right. Whatever you say. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. Okay, and then I don't need him to keep me awake tonight. Sorry, it's nothing. I shook my head and nuzzled him, looking back to the floor. I didn't know what to say, in pure honesty. Sam seemed to understand and hugged me gently. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Just have a repeat of that conversation. I closed my eyes, listening to him breathe, or breath, as I let out a silent sigh. All right, and then I gotta skip ahead again. Scary dreams. And then don't kiss him again, nuzzle into his shoulder. I was anxious to know what would come in the day. However, I was confident we would get through the day. I nuzzled Sam's shoulder, feeling him let out a loving hum against my shoulder. All right, and then next one. Okay, we don't tell them that we heard a dragon speaking to us. Let it go. I shook my head. Whatever was in my mind was gone now, so I had no reason to be distracted. Sorry. Just had a rough night. Oh, we're sorry. Is everything okay now? I nodded, wanting to shake off Twyla's worries. Yeah, it was just a nightmare. It went away the second time I went to bed. Everyone nodded in understanding before Sam wrapped an arm around me and hugged me to his side. Well, like we said, we'll be ready for whatever the Demon Lord throws our way. I wouldn't be too sure about that just yet. Now, what is the next thing? Let's see. Do, do, do. Is that... Okay, it's only a couple of options. I might as well just keep you guys here. Basically, to say I don't need a trainer. I'll leave that alone. I mean, we might as well just keep it the same. We can skip through all those stuff again. And then this should be a different option. Yeah, I gotta attack Diana this time. Fun! 
If she wasn't listening, she would be the thing to stop Saro. I quickly formed a fist and threw it at Diana, but stared wide-eyed as Diana caught my fist and glared hard at me. Watch. I still wasn't understanding. I tried to pull my hand away, but Diana held it firmly. She wasn't going to give me a choice from the look in her eyes. I turned my gaze to the fight, desperate to try and see what Diana wanted me to witness. Are you that weak, Incubus? You haven't landed a blow on me once! Okay, we're gonna skip this a bit. Now we're gonna ask if he's okay again. I needed to know if he was okay. I watched, however, as Sam let out another sigh, closed his eyes, and didn't reply. My worry increased, but soon enough, Sam simply stood up. I stood as well with a frown. Okay, and then... It's the test in the morning. Struggle. I didn't care. This was beyond wrong. Whatever the hell Diana wanted to do to Sam. I started to struggle in Sarah's arms, but he tightened his hold on me, making me freeze against him. You have fire within you, but now is not the time to release it. Okay, and then after Sam goes crazy on Diana, we don't stick up for her. Explain anything to him. Let him speak. Sam was beyond angry and needed to let his emotions out. I knew better, but who knew if Sam would even believe that a voice told him to do so? If you ever touch her again! Sarah's glare turned into a scowl. We didn't have a choice, filthy dog. Sam started to snarl and stand, but I gripped his hands, keeping him close to me. Sam. The fuck do you mean you didn't have a choice? We were told to try and trick you. Sam stared wide-eyed at Sarah and Diana before glaring once again. You're a shitty liar. And you are a brain-dead brute. Can you not feel it yet? Feel what? Open your eyes, Incubus. You are being watched by something powerful, and you are being tested. All right, next choice. Don't say it's okay. There was nothing that needed to be said. I simply looked at Sam, waiting for him to calm down. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> All right. And then cute wife side times happening. Guys doing your things. You all right? Okay, am I all right? This is after finding out about my test, I guess. This, I guess this time I say no. I was nervous. There was no way I could have been all right. I didn't know what was planned for me, what I was expected to do. I shook my head, looking to the ground. I don't know what it would want from me. Sam grimaced and wrapped his arms around me. Hey, you'll be fine. I'm sure you can pass whatever it's planning, no problem. All right, and then I have to stop him from change. And yeah, need to. Uh, I need to wait for him to change. Actually, it wasn't often that I saw his demon form. Only whenever he ran out of energy, which in itself was rare. And he's back. Sam took a breath and focused his energy, causing the marks on his skin and the horns on his head to vanish without a trace. He made sure he formed a pair of pants as well, but remained shirtless to sleep. Interesting. So even his pants are magicked. Sam grinned and motioned to the bed with his head. Come on, we gotta sleep. <laughs> with a nod of my own, I slipped into bed with him and closed my eyes. I had to prepare myself for whatever the dragon had planned. I half expected to wake up to Diana to be disguised as Sam as the morning came. Okay, and then we gotta skip again. So instead of kissing him, we just say, Thanks, Sam. I was glad to know that Sam was supporting me through this. All right, skip again. Oh dear. <laughs> do, do, do. Okay, let's be the last with the wives. Okay, and then I don't even answer. If it is what I thought it was, I didn't need to answer. If I had to go through with it to pass a stupid test, then I needed more time. Something like this was apparently very serious and needed heavy consideration. 
Diana pressed her lips together before sighing and gesturing to the flowers. This is a marriage ritual. Freshly blossomed flowers holding peak-worthy magical essence arranged in a magic circle are part of what a binding ritual needs to happen. I just realized that Sam's like hiding behind her and that's really funny. <laughs> Okay, and this time, I just gotta go find him. Don't think about it. Don't be rational. Okay, I don't even have to read through anything else there. Um, okay. Keep going. And I don't say this. That's kind of sad. Just nod. I couldn't bring myself to say anything. I was so happy. I gripped over his hand and kissed it, feeling so complete that he was here with me. I had found him at last. Well done. Alright, and this time I gotta stop him from going through with his test. I couldn't let him do it. I needed him here, for sure alive. It was too big of a risk to send him in there. I grabbed onto Sam's hand, pulling him back. No, don't. Sam stared at me in shock. Why not? I I looked up at him, uncaring about the fear obviously stricken on my face. I saw you die in there. In one of my nightmares. Please, don't. I could hear the concern dripping in my words. I wanted Sam to survive, no matter what. Screw the words being selfish. I would protect Sam with my life. Sam stared silently at me, taking in what I had just said before letting out a sigh and nodding. My heart melted in happy relief as Sam turned away from the cave. You heard her. I'm not coming in. Aw, oh, poor Sam. So be it. <laughs> wow, that was like Emperor level. Emperor Palpatine level. So be it, Jedi. Before Sam and I could walk away, a light burst into the air, causing us to grip onto each other and shut our eyes. The warmth of the light seemed to comfort and ease our travel to wherever the dragon was sending us. Oh, he still, like, sent us home, so that's good. Maybe Diana said something different this time, though. Yeah. She did. Diana stared at us for a moment before shaking her head. Well, at least you're here now. Yeah. We've been worried about you guys. At least now we can prepare for the siege. Thank goodness you're both alright. Are either of you hurt? I shook my head with a smile, thankful that we weren't. Okay. And then... This time I don't struggle when Di uh, when Damien shows up, I just keep watching. I want to burn that anger into your soul. Every single life that has been lost in this war to stop the Demon Lord was because of you and your love. Moving swiftly on from that. When it's the last night together, we're just gonna sleep. Man, zero fun times in these bad endings with Sam. Excuse me, at least in like, James and Eric, there was like one bad ending where you could have one fun time at least, or something. We would survive, we would be okay. I felt safe in Sam's arms and I'm sure he felt safe in mine. We would return to the human world and be okay. Sam kissed my forehead, feeling my exhaustion, and we tucked ourselves in, wrapping each other in our arms and escaping one last time to the darkness of slumber before we died. Okay, and then I have one more option to pick. So we'll just get there. Get her done. Do 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 do. Malik shows up. That goober. And we know. Don't help him. Just stay back. And then we'll see. Here we go. Of course, he doesn't have the power of the dragon this time, so. Malik's continued to pound punch upon punch onto Sam's body, making the body shaped indentation in the castle wall that much deeper. However, with a small flash of green light, heat suddenly began to erupt from the center. Get off! Okay, so it's cause he didn't have, like, the dragon light. Sam glared hard as he clenched his fists and formed a simple sword in his hand, one he had used in training multiple times. Ooh, bringing the blade out, huh? 
What happened to those good old brute fists of yours? Malix raised the arm at his side, forming a large sword with a red blade and a chain connecting from the hilt to his belt. Time to slice a bitch up! <laughs> Malix and Sam rush at each other, slamming their swords into each other with reckless speed. I couldn't understand how Malix gained the ability to be as fast as Sam, but something about the devil was very different from the first and last time I had seen him. He was much more cocky, and there was some sort of strength within him that frightened me more than before. However, I felt that Sam still had the upper hand. There was no way he would let Malix win. Sam flipped over Malix and slashed his back, opening the fabric of his vest, but not deep enough to make contact with skin. Malix snarled and spun around, reinitiating their clash of swords. What's wrong, pretty boy? You seem to be holding back! I don't need to waste energy killing you! At last, their swords slammed against one another, a screech echoing through the air. Both pushed against one another, snarling into each other's faces. It's pointless, Incubus! This world is fucked! Tell that to Satan when you die! Sam suddenly lifted his foot up and jammed it into Malix's chest, kicking him back towards the castle wall. With a grunt and the crack of broken ribs reverberating through the air, Malix slid back and glared at Sam. However, the glare quickly died into a look of sadistic amusement as Malix rolled his shoulders and stood back up, as if he could just shrug off the injury. Around his body grew a bright orange and red flame, causing waves of heat to pulse through the air around us. You want a final showdown? You got it! Sam, with a smirk of his own, stood tall with a fast-growing green aura around his body. The air around him pulsed in sync with Malix's in equal measure. It's over, Malix. I watched as they both charged up their final attacks and forced their palms out towards each other. Green and red orbs of light shot out from each of their hands and collided followed by brilliant rays that pushed them forward and into each other. I had to shut my eyes, blocking the flash of light from blinding my vision, before looking back up and seeing the bout with a gasp. The air around the orbs pulsed heavily, whipping in all directions and fueled by both the demon and the devil. The orbs grabbed into one another, lightning and fire bursting from the minuscule space between them. Both opponents had their eyes locked on each other as the earth around them bent and bowed away from the collision of their power. Still, they were somehow equally matched. How could this be? My dragon power didn't help at all. Give him your remaining energy, child. It is the only way to end this. Oh, we're still on speaking terms. That's great. The voice of the dragon rang in my head as I stared at Sam. His face was tightened in pure anger and determination. He was giving as much as he could, but I knew he was holding back to save energy for his father. I took a breath and quickly rushed over to Sam, grabbing hold of his arm and feeling his body naturally pull energy from me. Gah! What are you doing? Ending this together! Sam stared at me, causing his orb to falter, but as I passed my energy on to him, Sam nodded and focused back on Malix, concentrating his orb forward with both his energy and mine. Malix would not win. I wouldn't let him. At last, the deadlock became pressed as Sansor pushed Malix's back, inch by inch, with each push getting stronger and faster. I could feel myself grow dizzy, but I didn't care. This was Malix's last stand. What? No! I glared hard at Malix as the clash between them became full of green energy, cutting through the devil's attack with ease. Sam's orb at last made purchase and slammed into Malix's body, knocking him fully into the castle wall. As the orb vanished, Sam quickly rushed forward and rammed his sword into Malix's chest, pinning him up into the stone. It's over, Malix. Fucking die already! Do I have to tear you apart again? Sam pulled back, giving me the full view of his sword buried to the hilt into Malix's chest. Malix, however, only cackled and laughed, coughing blood with each chuckle. <laughs> Pathetic. You're weak, Incubus. You and your bitch human. Says the one impaled on a wall. This is true. <laughs> you think you can win this war? Be my guest. I'll be back and I'll piss on your corpse when it's all over. A plus maniacal laughter. Love it. With a terrifying laugh, Malix's body melted into hot lava, dripping over the sword's blade and landing on the ground before fading away. I stared in shock. He was coming back? 
I could tell that Sam was angry, but my exhaustion finally hit me like a wave. I crumpled to my knees, slamming my hands to the ground to keep myself upright as I panted. I was worn out. If I hadn't been out of energy before, I definitely was now. Sam quickly dropped down beside me, wrapping an arm around my shoulders and laying a careful hand on my arm. Whoa! Are you okay? I nodded, obviously lying, but I knew that we had more important things to worry about. Malix was gone. Definitely not dead. And we were at the castle gates, ready to charge in and fight the demon lord. As Sam and I looked up, we both locked our sights on a window exploding outward with a figure flying out of it. As the figure flapped their wings and steadied themselves, they swooped back inside. Diana! I gripped Sam's arm and lifted myself up, knowing that we had to get inside. You good? Yeah, let's just go. Okay, so let's skip again. There's a fight going on. Alright. Sam lifted his sword to his side and rushed forward, swinging his sword at the Demon Lord. However, his attack was quickly parried, with his opponent's smile growing smug. Then show me what you've got, little brute! Sam snarled and began to swing again and again at the Demon Lord, occasionally shifting positions to find a better angle to attack from. Unfortunately, the Demon Lord matched him every time, blocking and returning the attacks. I watched in shock. Even with Diana's attack on him, the Demon Lord seemed hardly worn down at all, almost indestructible. Was there no way to bring him down? Sam threw every swing harder and harder, hoping to gain some ground. The clashing of their swords became louder and louder with each swing and parry. It was almost deafening. Give up, boy! Fuck you! With a snarl, the demon lord reached and grabbed hold of Sam's sword by the blade, making me gasp at the sight. What the hell? With Sam surprised as well, the demon lord ripped it from Sam's grip and tossed it towards me and Diana. I instantly gripped Diana's head and made us duck, letting it crash through the stained glass. In retaliation, however, Sam kicked the demon lord's sword out of his hand, leaving both opponents weaponless. They took that moment to glare at each other, with the demon lord clenching his fingers over the open blade wound on his hand. As I stared at the demon lord's hand, however, I could see a faint black and red aura around it. Was he casting something? The blood that was dripping from it vanished as the demon lord chuckled at his son. I will kill you, old man! I want to see you try. You don't even have the strength to save your precious human! This is where it happens, isn't it? I had heard this before. I looked behind me to see the blade of Sam's sword crash back through the stained glass and rip through my body to erupt from my chest. Oh, this was the dream. So it's his own sword that... <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Sam's own sword impaled me. Gah! The familiar feeling of pain racked through my nerves and body as I stared at the blade sticking out of my sternum. I couldn't even speak as I looked up at Sam and reached out for him. Sam's face instantly paled and his body quickly turned to run in my direction. As I began to fall forward, the world went into slow motion as if fate wanted me to take in the cruelty of the moment. I locked eyes with Sam, trying not to faint from the shock and pain. As I watched the demon lord pick up his sword once more and ram it into his son's back, the blade jutting out of his stomach. At least we were impaled together, my love. I heard no sound as Sam's mouth opened in a pained grimace. As the demon lord ripped the sword out, I managed to hit the floor, now laid over a pool of freshly flowing blood. My own blood. I stretched my head up to see Sam fall to his knees as well, staring at me with tears in his eyes and blood oozing from the open wound in his body. I weakly stretched my hand out as Sam fell forward and reached back for me. We had lost. We were dying. And we couldn't even reach each other as we fought to take in shallow breath upon breath. I felt the darkness of death rush over my skin as I desperately tried to stretch forward, but before I could reach him, I succumbed. Ah, That's so sad. <laughs> the monster is dead. Whew, that was a heavy one. Still, I haven't had one, like, hit me as hard as, uh, as James, James's ending. Where she got, like, ripped back into... She got baptized and her memories were removed and everything. Oh, that was that was tragic. That This ending was really sad, too. Whew. All right. One more bad ending. And then that'll be it. So we'll see how sad that one is, guys. Uh, 
thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you over there.